entire nation back into favor with God. It is possible. If all the people, like what God has been speaking to us these days, if all the church leaders, all the churches put away their differences and come together in the bond of unity. It doesn't matter, you know, whether you believe in tongues or you don't believe in tongues. It doesn't matter. We all believe that we are saved by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Isn't it? That's good enough for me to hold your hands and pray together. Whether you believe in tongues or not, doesn't matter. It's just fine. We don't have to quarrel over our petty differences. Let's put it aside. The blood of Jesus unites us together. Amen. That is enough. That is enough to hold hands and pray together. Isn't it? We believe, we believe in the inerrancy of the word of God. We believe we are saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus was born of a virgin woman. We believe he died and he rose again. And he's coming back again. And we believe that by the blood of the Lamb we are saved. Isn't that good enough? That's good enough. Then why fight over all these petty things? Put away all these petty things. Let's come together. In the bond of unity. If we can do that, this nation can be saved. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up for a word of prayer. Holy Father, I have shared with your children what you have shown me to share with them, Lord. From this day onwards, as they purpose in their heart to do like what Jacob did, to do like what Abraham did, to do like what Moses did and to do like what the Apostle John did as they learn Lord to walk with you to contend with you and to plead their case before you and to reason together with you Lord I pray you will come and sit with them and you will reason with them and as your scripture tells us in Isaiah 118 come let us reason together let us talk this over together you will come and talk together with them Lord and our one desire is this nation should not lose her destiny that is our one desire Lord that she will fulfill her destiny till the end and for such a purpose as this your people have gathered here Lord teach them your ways O Lord my God teach them your ways show them your ways teach them your ways show them your ways Lord that they may learn the path in which they need to walk Thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, stretch out your blessing hands upon each and every one of your dear children right now. Whatever is the desire in their hearts, fulfill them right now, Lord. If there be any shortcomings in their lives, Lord, forgive them. Forgive them. And restore them, Lord, back to their first love. Restore them back, Lord. That they may catch up. Continue where, from where they have fallen. Help them, Lord, to pick up the baton again. And run the race that is set before them. I know you can do that. Lord, they are willing to continue their race. Help them, Lord. Help them. Strengthen them one more time, Lord. Strengthen them. Strengthen them one more time. Let their anointings be restored back. Let their gifts be restored back. Help them, Lord, to come to that place of their call, 
of their walk. Lord, we read in Ezekiel 28 concerning Lucifer. You looked at Lucifer and you said, O thou, the anointed cherub, who was once in the Garden of Eden, Lord, like that, once they enjoyed a sweet communion with you. And now I pray, bring them back to that place, Lord. Bring them back. They are asking you, Lord. They do not know how to go back. They've lost the way. They don't know how to go back. But you said you are the way. So now I ask you, Lord, help them. Help them to come back. Come back to that place. Come back to that place, Lord. Where they walked with you. Where they had sweet intimacy with you. When they had served you with joy and sacrifice. Help them, Lord. Forgive them of all the mistakes they have done, Lord. Knowingly and unknowingly, Lord. Forgive them for straying away, Lord, to doing something that you didn't ask them to do. And they, it resulted in losses for them. Forgive them, Lord. They have suffered heavy financial loss because of that, Lord. Please forgive them. Please forgive them for their foolish mistakes. Please forgive them for not obeying you the very first time you spoke. Please forgive them, Lord. Please forgive them. Let them not fear that they have lost your call. That they have lost it all. Lord, take away that fear from their hearts. Give them that assurance, Lord, that you are the God of the second chance. You gave Samson a second chance, Lord. You gave Solomon a second chance. You gave Peter a second chance. Give them a second chance, Lord. Give them a second chance. Let them rise up. Rise up, Lord. From the ashes, help them, Lord, to rise up. Lord, maybe they didn't want to rise up. Maybe they had refused to rise up. It could have been done ignorantly, Lord. They didn't know why they did that. But now they are repenting, Lord. Now they are crying out to you. Fearing of lost opportunity, whether they will get it back or not. Lord, remember. Remember how much they have labored for you, Lord. How much they did not give sleep to their eyes. How much they allowed tears to roll down their eyes, waiting and watching unto you. Thirsting after you, desiring after you. Seeking after you. Remember, Lord, how much they have given liberally to your works. Please remember all that, Lord. And I pray now. Restore them, Lord. Restore them back. Restore them back to their first love. Restore them back to you. Who do they else have in this world except you, Lord? Who other, which other God do they have besides you, Lord? If you will reject them, where will they go? Which other God is there to love them? Which other God is there to embrace them? Which other God is there to care for them? There is none, Lord. There is none. You are the only one, Lord. You are the only one. There is no other God beside you. 
how can you cast away your heritage you can do that you can do that lord you can do that remember lord remember the promise that you made to abraham you said not only this seed but also that which is going to come who will believe in you lord you said that lord you when you on this earth you even said not only this but to those who will believe to them you looked at our times lord and you included us in the seed of abraham if we are included in the seed of abraham that covenant you made with abraham is eternal 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 lord irrevocable that is why even till today You do not give up on Israel. If you will not give up on them, how can you give up on these your children? These your people, Lord. How can you give up? You cannot give up, Lord. You cannot give up. Embrace them, Lord. Embrace them. Embrace them. Embrace them to your bosom, Lord. and restore them back restore them back restore them back let them experience your love be an all understanding right now let them experience a peace be an all understanding right now let your love and your peace fill fill their hearts and minds right now lord right now right now let it flood the entire being lord thank you wonderful lord jesus lord let not your scepter be removed from them lord take not that scepter from them lord which is your favor which is your grace lord Thank you wonderful Lord Jesus. Thank you wonderful Lord Jesus. Thank you wonderful Lord Jesus. Lord, as you are present in our midst right now, I ask you Lord to lay your hands upon every one of them. Every one of them. Even the little ones when our midst Lord, lay your blessing hands upon the little babies Lord, the young children Lord, and the adults. Lay your blessing hands upon every one of them. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. Oh, you are a good God. Your grace and mercy endures for ever and ever. Come and lift up your holy hands and bless the name of the living God, who lives for ever and ever. His loving kindness. and dears for ever and ever thank you wonderful god 
The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Please be seated. Are oh, you already seated? You know, with this new microphone, I feel my ears so heavy. You know, in India, the olden, olden days, you know, there was an old woman in the villages. They wear very heavy earrings. And the earrings weigh at least half a kilogram. And then it pulls the ears down until the earlobes become so big. Right now, I feel like my ears are becoming like that. <laughs> anyway, our God is a good God. Amen? I hope at the end of this conference, when I go back to India, all the old women will not think that he's one of us right now. You know, <clears throat> how do you want me to preach to you? Sugar-coated message or naked as it is? Naked as it is? Are you sure? You are not, you are not going to get hurt? All right. You ask for it, huh? I say this with great love. I do not know anything about you people. This is the first time I'm coming to Spokane. The only person that I know in this entire auditorium is Bruce Allen and his dear wife Reshma. That's the only people that I know. So I, I, whenever I come into this auditorium, I feel like a lost kid. Just lost kid standing there in one corner. That's what I did last, last night. Standing there in one corner, didn't know where to go. Now, that's not the issue. The issue is this. When I was here during the worship last night, I sincerely prayed and asked the Lord, Lord Jesus, in this conference, what do you intend to do? So, the Lord showed me, the people who are gathered here in this conference, good people, good heart, you desire to know but you are not a practitioner it is one thing to desire but it is another thing to be a practitioner you must be a practitioner to enter into the next move of God you cannot be a just a someone who desires I like to hear this I like to hear that I'll go to this conference I'll go to that conference oh that's a good word and then you take it and you go home. Then you end up like the seed that fell by the roadside. They received the seed, you know, but it fell on the roadside. It did not fall on good ground. You should not be like that. Neither should be like the people where the seed fell on stony ground. And neither should you also be like the people where the seed fell on thorny grounds, thorns. You should be like the people where the seed will fall on good ground. When it falls on good ground, it matures, it grows, and it brings forth more fruit. How are you? Why are you here? Is it just to hear? Oh, that's a good word. You clap your hands. You feel that your vacation was fruitful. You feel that the time spent is good. Is that why you're here? I'm sure you're not here for that purpose. If you're not here for that purpose, then we should not fall to the second category. The second category is, oh, it's okay, but I don't think it's for me. 
if it is not for me, if it is not for you, God would not have made all his gifts and graces freely available for everybody. It's for everybody, you know, not for one or for two, or not for the elite. It's for everybody. You know, years ago, before I started walking in the realm of the spirit, and before my spiritual eyes were opened, I greatly thirsted and desired to have my spiritual eyes opened. You know, I, I got born again from being a Hindu. In a meeting that was organized by a denomination that doesn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in all that. But however, they are very good in proclaiming the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, being a Hindu, and I received this flyer in my letterbox announcing about a 30-day crusade. I just felt compelled to go. You know, being a Hindu, we do not know anything about all the fightings that goes on in a church. Whether my denomination is right, your denomination is right, we don't know anything all this, you know. We only know one thing. There is a God called Jesus Christ. And the Christians go to a church. That's all we know, being an outsider. So, I went to this meeting. It was in an auditorium, something like this, you know. And I was seated right up on the balcony, hearing the message. And when the preacher, an American man, gave an altar call, deep down in my spirit, I heard a voice. This is the true God. Go and follow him. Real voice, real audible voice coming from deep inside me. This is the true God. Go and follow him. So I thought in my mind, what about all the gods that we have been worshipping all this while? The Hindus worship 330 million gods, you know. Don't ask me how they counted. Somehow they got it all figured. So, and every Hindu, a good, pious Hindu, will worship at least a dozen gods in their houses. We have a small altar in our house, and we keep the pictures of all the gods. There will be one patron god. He's like the guardian of the family. And then, with all the other gods. So in our house, you know, we, have, we worship about a dozen gods. And here, I'm in this meeting, and I'm hearing this voice. This is the true God. Go and follow him. So there was a battle inside me. So what about all my other gods? What about them? So I just sat, you know. But the voice kept on speaking. Each time you stop, it will continue. Each time you stop, it continues. The only thing was, it was getting louder and louder and louder. This is the true God. Go and follow him. I didn't, didn't know what to do, what to make of it, if, you know. So I just sat on the seat. And after a while, I felt the chair on which I was sitting began to shake. It literally shook. Literally shook. And I was looking, you know, the chair was shaking. Literally shaking. And the voice keep on speaking. This is the true God. And the impression is coming into my mind. Get up. Get up and go. And guess what I did? I just held on to the handle. <laughs> I wouldn't go. See, I didn't know what to make out of it, you know. Why is this voice telling me this is a true God? Why is the chair shaking? I didn't know. But I was just very stubborn. So I saw a lot of people getting up from their chairs and going to the front. Then suddenly, a third thing happened. I felt a hand below my back. It gently lifted me up to my feet. Now, I was up at the balcony, you know. So I thought in my mind, first there was a voice, second came the shakening, third came the hand that lifted me up. If 
I were to resist any longer, this hand is going to take me up and throw me down. <laughs> so I thought, let me just submit myself to it. And I felt this hand just clutching me, you know, and it gently let me down. Three flights of steps. And I came and I stood on the left part where the preacher was standing. I clearly remember this whole thing as if it happened yesterday. As soon as I came, it seemed that the preacher was waiting for me all the while. I don't think he noticed me. Nice white man, you know. I don't think he noticed me because there were about 50 other people. And I was standing in one corner, not surrounded by anybody. So as soon as I came, he said, let us pray. So he started leading the people in the sinner's prayer. I didn't understand anything, you know. I'm, I was just a Hindu, 16 years old. So I was standing there. So I didn't know what to, whether to repeat the sinner's prayer or not to repeat the sinner's prayer. I didn't know anything. So I stood there. I said, okay, I've come this far. Let me go one step further. See, I looked up, you know. I said, Jesus, if you are the true God, please set me free from this cycle of rebirth. Hindus believe that, no? Cycle of rebirth. And they believe that there are eight... Does that sound good? So good. <laughs> but I hate to hold a mic though. I like my hands free, you know. Anyway, it's okay. So, so I said, Lord, if you are the true God, please set me free from the cycle of rebirth. As soon as I said that, I felt a pot of oil being poured on my head. I literally felt it, you know. And it was, I turned around to see if anybody was standing beside me. There was no one within a three foot radius. No one. But I felt a pot of oil being poured on my head. It oozed down my head. And as it was oozing down, I felt a cleansing taking place inside my heart. And it flowed down my hands. It flowed down my body, all over my face. And it reached my legs. And when it reached the toes, and when it left, I felt my, all my sins forgiven me. And a great peace that I cannot explain, come and fill my heart. At that moment, I knew this Jesus Christ is the true living God. With four supernatural encounters, I came to the Lord. So, after I got saved, and uh, this church, you know, the, that held the meeting, gave me some pamphlets and some books as a follow-up to read. So I came back home. I kept my faith hidden. My father was a priest. So you don't want to go and tell him I just became a Christian. You know, so I kept it hidden as long as I could until I was caught red-handed with the Bible and then all hell broke loose. So he severely rep reprimanded me from uh, reading the Bible or having to do anything to do with Christians. So I obeyed him, no? I forgot everything about uh, the meeting, the church, everything. But I was back to my normal life as a Hindu. Then came our annual vacation, school vacation, you know? So during the vacation, I, I had nothing else to do. I had no friends. My father never allowed us to, to mix with any friends, you know? Very, very strict man, very strict. Home, school, home, that's all. No play, no play time. So anyway, so sitting at home, one month of vacation, not knowing what to do, so I was sitting all alone.